Hey Valley Metal, welcome to another math video. Uh, today we're going to be talking all about coordinate planes, graphing, and plotting points. But let's go ahead and start off with something fun. And being that I'm an English teacher, uh, primarily, here's my uh, just for fun question of the day. What is special about this sentence? Was it a, a car or a cat I saw? You think about that and we'll be back to check on it in about five minutes. All right, here we go. Today's tasty Targettos, there's two of them. I can identify the axes and quadrants of a coordinate plane, and I can identify the coordinates of a plotted point on the coordinate plane. Um, let's go for it here. Here's our kind of inquiry question to begin with. Do you know what these are? 4, 4, 3, 3. Could you identify this point? Well, if you said that these are coordinates for a point, you're absolutely 100% correct. And if you could identify this point and say what the coordinates are and say that it's 1, 2, so I'm just going to jot over here 2, say that it's 2, and then 1, 2, 3. If you could say that that's 2, 3, Put a couple of parentheses around that bad boy. You could say that that's the location of a that point. That that's its coordinate pair or its coordinates. Then you are about halfway down at the lesson already. Okay, that's what we're going to learn today. You're just going to review all of that stuff that I think you probably did in fifth grade as well. Um, all right, let's get some vocabulary out of the way first of all. Uh, this is the four coordinate plane or the coordinate graph. Um, there are four quadrants, quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this. Uh, when you plot points, these ones here are going to have coordinates that are both positive, kind of like this, these coordinate pairs up here, 4, 4. You're going to go over 4 and up 4. 3, 3, the same thing, 3 and 3. This quadrant here you're going to have a negative number first. You're going to go over a negative 3 and then up, let's say, 2. So this would have a negative 3 and then 2. This quadrant here, you would have a negative 3 and a negative 2. On this one here, you'd have a positive 3 for the x value and then a negative for the y. Why am I blowing through this so quickly? Today, we're only interested in quadrant one. That's where sixth graders have to plot points with positive coordinates and be able to identify them. However, it's in very useful information that you know that this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. You also need to know that this horizontal line here is the x-axis, and this vertical line is the y-axis. Okay, what's this little thing here? Well, I use this little guy here. I just put this right on the coordinate plane sometimes and think of it as a clock. Here's one o'clock, right? And the clock's running backwards. So here's quadrant one, two, three, four. They're just numbered backwards. Okay? So my clock helps me remember. I can just take and draw a coordinate graph over here, and I know that it's going to be one, two, three, four, even as in terms of sections of the pie. It's like a clock running backwards. Uh, finally, um, the origin, that is that spot right there at zero, zero. All right? Origin means where something begins, and that's where everything begins on the coordinate frame graph. So, coordinate pairs, we've got an X and a Y, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. We've got the different quadrants, one, two, three, and four. And we've got the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's take and see if you can uh, identify those things here. And I'm just going to ask you some questions. Uh, can you show me where the x-axis is? Well, if you pointed to this spot here on the computer screen where my cursor is right now, you would be correct. Can you show me where the y-axis is? Well, that's going to be the other one, so you should have pointed down here. Now let's see if you can label the quadrants as 1, 2, 3, and 4. Go ahead and pause for a second. I'm back. Yeah, 
these would be labeled like this. Here's one, two, three, and four. Just like my clock running backwards. One, two, three, four. Um, oftentimes the coordinate, uh, the quadrants are you are numbered using Roman numerals. So I'm going to put these back up on top so that you can see what the Roman numerals look like. It's really pretty simple, the 1, 2, and 3. They just use three tally marks or three I's. These are actually capital I's that I'm using. The fourth one is easy if you know that 5 is equal to V. So this is 1V, which means it's 1 before 5. So that's four. So one, two, three, and four. Someday I'll have to do a whole video on counting um, the numbers, the Roman numerals, but oftentimes you'll see it uh, laid out like that. All right, nice work. Let's get on to the next slide. This is on uh, coordinate pairs. So I, we learned on the first slide that this is a coordinate pair. We've got one, two here. If you watch, I can take and set these guys right on that function table. Because the function table gives us an x value and a y value. And the first value in a coordinate pair is the x value. The second value is a y value. Now you can also take and look at this little coordinate pair I put down here. This is the way I remember what the heck you do with these things. Especially when you're just doing the positive ones. The x one, you go this way. The y one, you go that way. So let's take and plot these points here. One, two. So I'm going to get my get a cloner out. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put it at the origin. And I'm going to see first I go one this way because I got one, two. I go one this way, and then I'm going to go two up. So I go one x, two up. Uh, the next one, I go two, four. So again, I'll get a cloner point, go to the origin. I go... Two, oh, I'm sorry, two, and I go this direction, and then four up. So I got over two, up to four. And the same thing with the last point. Go to the origin, always start at the origin. This time I have to go three, six, so three, six, over three, up to six. And that's how you plot points. That's how you plot coordinate pairs, all right? You got your x and your y value, just like we did in the last uh, chapter one with function tables. All right, I know this video is running a little long, but I'm doing two targets here, so bear with me. Uh, you'll notice that I ha I'm just using thatquiz.com, uh, and I'd like you to try practicing this a little bit, either at school or at home when you have time. If you go to that quiz and then go to points, one quadrant, and identify, or look at this video, you can set it up so you can practice. And I can practice right now. They want me to identify this point. So I'll go to my origin. It looks like the x is 3, and the y is 0. See how that works? And then I can just hit OK, and it's going to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Hey, it said I'm right. Plus, it starts a little clock to do 10 points. All right, why don't you uh, do this next one for me? Identify the x and the y value. Okay, the x is, starting at the origin, is going to be 1. The y value is 1, 2. Do you notice there's not numbers, so i got to work a little harder here. I have to count. Sometimes they don't put those on there. And hit OK. Now let's just say that I put 19 and 20 for this one here. It's going to tell you that it's wrong, and then when you get to the end of the 10, it'll actually tell you what the right points were. It won't show you the problem again, but... All right, so that's the way that quiz will help you practice that. That quiz will also help you practice plotting points. Now, this time, they're just going to give you 5, 4, and you need to go to the origin and go over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can click on that point and put a point there. Okay, I got it wrong because I clicked. For, I didn't click fast enough. One, two, three, four, five. I got my point. Now I click where I want to leave it. And it tells me that I got it right. Now I got my point again. I got one and then three. One, two, three. And I click there. 
will give me a new point and a new, uh, a new ball. I'm sorry, a new point and a new set of coordinates down here. So that's a fun way to practice that. And if you look over here, you'll see that that's the same thing. That's that quiz points, one quadrant, and then you're just going to choose plot over here. Uh, the first one you choose identify. Again, make sure you're on that. If you'd like to, you can try four quadrants uh, to practice. And I'm just going to hit reset a few times here. And you'll see that eventually you're going to get some negative you get some negative coordinates like this one where you have to go negative 2, 1, 2, and then 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? Good luck. Here's a negative 4, negative 2. Over for negative 4, down negative 2. And so on. I think we're ready for the ticket to the show. All righty. Two questions. Identify the quadrants of this plane, coordinate plane here, and then identify the coordinates of this point. So you'll come tomorrow with a little X drawn, or a little, uh, you know, an X and a Y axis uh, drawn. You'll have them numbered. Remember the clock, and then you'll also have the coordinates to that point on there. All right? Great. Let's go to the ticket for the show, and I appreciate you being uh, patient with me today. What is special about this sentence? Was it a car or a cat I saw? This sentence reads the same, both forward and backwards, and apparently it's the only sentence in the English language that'll do that. I'll show you what I mean. Look at Was it a car or cat? A cat I saw. Look backwards. Was it a car or a cat I saw? Is that weird or what? I don't know. That's from my son, Casey. If you ever have something uh, interesting that you think would be a great just for fun question or video, make sure you let me know. Have a great night. See you tomorrow in class.